uh, I thought we played well tonight for about 25 to 28 minutes. I thought we played uh, really well. Uh, I think we started eight for 13 from three. It was great to see those those shots go in. It was great to see our our complete team for the first time this year and what we can look like and what we have the potential to be. It's the first time we've had everybody on our roster on the court and, and uh, active and ready to go, with the exception of Travis Anderson. Um, uh, but um, it's the first time we've had our top 10 on the, on the court together in, in a clean rotation where we can sub a position for position instead of uh, mixing guys and guys playing multiple positions, which is very hard to do. Uh, guys don't have to play more than four or five or six minutes at a time and uh, can really exert a lot more energy. Our, our, our uh, substitution pattern was just very clean. Um, I thought we moved the ball on nine turnovers. I mean, we've harped on turnovers. And um, uh, we have everybody in the gym uh, doing push-ups. When anybody turns the ball over, everybody in the gym. Mr. Barber was in the gym the other day, and Colton – I uh, asked Mr. Barber to do 10 push-ups. Somebody turned it over, and then I asked Colton to make sure I still had a job. But um, everybody does push-ups, and and um, so improvement. Um, obviously, it's amazing to have this guy back. You don't realize what he brings until you don't play with him. And the energy, the character, uh, the enthusiasm, the length, the basketball IQ, the ability to score, the tenacity, uh, the fearlessness just becomes contagious. And it really picked up about two or three days ago. His first day of practice was like um, was like Christmas um, because we got to we got to have Flan out there on the court again, and uh, he just makes a big difference. He gives everybody confidence, and um, so we're a work in progress. We're working to get better and better, and getting used to having Flan again. I thought we had some glimpses of it tonight of what we can be, uh, and and then I thought we got a little tired. Um, I love how we changed our defenses. We're able to do that a lot more with Flanders uh, because he's such a big part of our defensive attack. So it takes a lot of pressure off Christian, allows Travis McConico to do what he does best. And it's great to see him go five for six tonight. Uh, it takes a lot of pressure off uh, Don, uh, DD, and um, it just is a lot smoother with him in there. Duncan can do what he does well and not having to overcreate and try to do things that, that we didn't recruit them to do. So. Um, obviously, 16 games ahead of us that are just – each one is a, a battle unto itself. I talked to the team after the game about each one You is, is our Super Bowl, and then you have to be able to be mature and put that one out the door and the next one comes. Uh, the league is a lot better than people thought it would be, a lot better. And uh, there's going to be some amazing games here in the Buck Dome um, starting sa Saturday at 5.30. Uh, not at 5, at 5.30, and like I tweeted out today. But um, <laughs> at 5.30 on Saturday, I, I would anticipate that this place will be full and, um, and have a very good high point team coming in and might as well start with one of the best teams and we'll be doing that when high point comes in. So uh, very proud of our guys tonight. Excited to have this guy. I love this guy and, and um, excited about what we can be. We got a glimpse of that today. Plan, can you talk about just the anticipation of knowing that you were going to play today when you came back from the holiday, you go through the practices? One, how hard was it to not be playing and to be patient and let yourself heal? And then two, talk about just the excitement. Obviously, you came right in the game, got a tip, a dunk, you know, you, you started making your impact. Uh, like you said, uh, I had a lot of anticipation. I was very anxious to get back on the court, seeing my guys go through what uh, the last few games. Without me, it, just, it didn't hurt, but it, I know that God was, had a plan. So I just was being patient, ready to go. And when I came in, I just felt like I was home again. I just felt like everything was released. Basketball is my safe haven. When I get inside the rectangle, it's just, that's how I do. Were you, did you feel like you could have played earlier? Or, or, or were you just letting the doctors and the trainers say, hey, I mean, because on the sidelines, you were doing a lot of jumping around <laughs> when you weren't playing. Yeah, well, I trust uh, this, the, the, um, I've led the training staff, the doctors uh, fully, so I was just waiting on them to give me the word. Um, I, I mean, my mind, my mind told me I could play, but yeah. I, whenever they said I could play, and now you see that I feel good, I feel great, and I'm, be, I'm back. 
we, we weren't that that was a lot of me in there uh he doesn't know this because he's going to be really mad he, he's going to play a lot of basketball he's going to play the next three years here and then he's going to have a lengthy career somewhere wherever god uses him and we wanted it to be fully healed so it didn't become chronic and so uh, a non-conference game against clemson he probably could have played in but what value would have that have brought to us if if he he would have tweaked it again and then, then he would be done for the year, and then we're facing surgery. So it was very difficult, very difficult. But we had to be very patient. Uh, big, a lot of credit to Hanan. He did a really good job with Flandris, and and a lot of credit uh, also to Thomas Butters, who you know we got him in the pool, we pushed him really hard, and and so what you're seeing today uh, is a is a lot of people real, working really hard. Um, for, on Flan's behalf, and um, a lot of conversations with his parents, keeping them up to date, and asking everybody to be patient. And uh, everybody wanted Flan to play, and I was the leader of that, wanting him to play. But I, I, we went slower than we could have because he's so special, and we want him to be able to play a long time and not have a, a chronic knee injury. And I'm glad we did. And tonight he was full, and we could have played him more minutes if we wanted to, um, but there was no need to tonight. We, we got him a good taste of the court. And it's amazing how fast his reflexes and his IQ came back. It's amazing. Uh, you mentioned a little bit about the conference schedule. Um, you're six and seven. There's probably three games you'd like to have back. Maybe we'd like to play him again. But where, where you played without one of your best players for that stretch of game. So where's this team at? Um, in terms of being prepared for what lies ahead, like you said, the 16 Super Bowl is coming up. Hope and I were sitting in our chair this morning, and she asked us in our chairs uh, this morning. <laughs> sometimes, we, sometimes we share. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, we were, and she asked the same question. I don't know. I don't know. Usually, you use your preseason to see where you are. I know we were really, really good in our two scrimmages. Um, I know that we were terrific in the preseason. And I know that this team has a lot of potential, but even with Flan, we're still the 338th youngest team in the country, and some of these guys hadn't been through a Big South war yet. Yeah. And it's a different feeling. I mean, that thing on Saturday will be a different beast than what we faced. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think our, our, our non-conference schedule, to my surprise, uh, was much harder than I thought it would be when we originally uh, agreed to the games. The teams that we scheduled were better than we thought. Um, and it strengthened us. We're looking at a blessing. Just a, a, a lot of good came from not having Flan. We established Duncan as one of the top freshmen in the league. Um, he played a lot of minutes and then kind of can settle back into a role of where we wanted him to be originally. And uh, so I don't know how good we can be. I know for 25 minutes a night we were outstanding, outstanding regardless of the opponent. That's repeatable things we did. And, and so I'm excited to see us grow. We're going to have to be a little more patient. I, I wanted us to be crisp and right out of the box and ready to go on Saturday. And I think we still have some growth in us uh, because we're going to have to get used to having Flan back. But um, at the end of the year, um, I, think, I think we're going to look and see that he's one of the top you know, seven, eight players in our league. And um, I'm going to remind him on Saturday morning that they didn't vote him all conference. I just want one more for you. Obviously, you had a great freshman year last year, but you, you played a lot over the summer with the Pan Am games, and I was just working on your game in general. Where do you feel like you're the most – where do you feel like you've improved the most from last year to this year? Um, uh, mostly my dribbling. Uh, that's what I focus on, my dribbling and my shooting, and uh, just knowing my spots, how to relocate, uh, just know how to uh, get faster laterally, get quicker, playing defense. But mostly my dribbling over the summer, I dribbled a lot. Um, coach gave me the task of being able to dribble better because I knew I was going to be handling the ball more this year. And uh, my dribbling, and, and I just raised my IQ, focusing on the game, uh, studying the game. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, I, I, just one final thing. If, if you know, if there's any players out, coaches out there that, that have an injured player, they need to, I, I would recommend every one of you study Flan. I, I've, I've been doing it 31 years, and I've never seen a young man handle a serious injury as well as he has handled this. There's, I've had 15 media people ask me, who is that? 
and you know, as we've traveled around playing non-conference games and uh, even some said everybody needs a little flan in their life he handled it with great poise with great patience the biggest thing he did he was the biggest cheerleader and the best assistant coach and the and the and more verbal in practice than I'd care to mention uh, he wanted to coach the team drive the bus serve the food and then cheer during the games he just was amazing and it speaks of his character and it speaks about what our basketball program is about and he's a shining example for anybody that has an injury they ought to call Flan and get a lot of advice um, I know next time I'm playing lunch basketball and sprain my ankle I'm gonna I'm gonna call him up and um, so anyway it was just extremely well done and I'm really really proud of him and that's what we want to be at Charleston Southern he's a great example of that Happy New Year. What's this about lunch basketball? I made that up on the fly.